Hi, uh, this is John Reed, johnnyrp.com. It's been a little while since I uh, shot a video in my office. The reason being I was uh, in Atlanta for an extended uh, business trip. And I'm just getting back and some things never change. I'm having a little bit of a rough uh, hair day today. So I'm back to the cap, this time my SAP Mentor cap. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today is something that I wrote about in a white paper series I put out for the uh, Career Center at the SAP Community Network. And uh, the white paper is the SAP Career Outlook 2010 in parts one and two. And I really recommend you check that out. You can see it on SCN and you can also see it on my own website, johnnyrp.com. Now, one of the topics that I cover in that white paper is something I have been thinking about a lot over the years. And it's a question that I get frequently also, which is, what is the best skills mix for an SAP professional, in particular an SAP consultant? And, you know, I hear a lot from uh, people who want to say, well, you know, I, I'm techno-functional, 50-50, that's perfect. Or, uh, I can do it all. I can do a little bit of everything, a little bit of basis, ABAP, functional stuff. I find that generally doesn't really work. SAP is really more a matter of focus, and a lot of times in a functional area, you can't even cover everything in the same area. I just taped a podcast on CRM skills tonight, and I was asking two CRM experts about this, and you can't even really cover all the CRM areas in a functional way, and really have depth in all the areas that you need. So SAP is very broad, so this notion of covering it all, it really doesn't work. Now, occasionally you find a 15-year consultant in SAP who really has been there and done that, but I don't think that's a good roadmap for most of us to follow as far as specializing in so many different areas and pulling it all together. So, how does this play out for a typical SAP professional? Well, I do think there has been a change in that we are seeing the emergence of some very interesting techno-functional roles that really are more like 50-50. These are the infamous so-called business process expert type roles that are coming into play. I say infamous only because there's been so much debate around whether these roles are hype or for real. A couple of them that we're seeing are a little more technical in nature. Solution architect, sometimes called uh, enterprise architect. I see those two as a little bit different. Uh, but at any rate, uh, those roles can often be a little more technical, but they do require a lot of functional understanding about either how SAP solutions work or about business process design or process modeling. These kinds of roles are definitely looking like 50-50 techno functional roles to me. Um, but they're kind of the newfangled roles and while they can be very appealing, let's face it, there's just not a ton of those roles out there yet. Most of the SAP work we see still focuses more on three classic areas, ABAP, basis, slash NetWeaver, and NetWeaver Admin, I guess you could say, and then the functional roles. So within those areas, what I really like to see is about an 80-20 uh, skills mix one way or the other. So if you're functional, 80% functional, 20% technical, you know, just enough ABAP that maybe you could fill in in a pinch if uh, someone gets hit with the, with the so-called H1N1 swine flu or something. Um, you basically know how to sit down and describe specs to a technical team and they don't look at you like you're from Mars. It's the 80-20 split. On the, on the technical side, it's the same. You know, just enough about functional config, you can reference a table and impress the functional guys that you know what you're talking about. You got just enough of that functional side that you understand the business know how you take that seriously. You really make it a point to understand both sides of the fence, but if you're a developer, your primary focus is really more on the cutting edge of development. You're spending more time learning things like Web Dim Pro UIs or composition environment. Uh, you're spending more time on that stuff than you are the nitty gritty of the change in, say, finance and taxation laws that a, that a functional person in FICO might need to keep track of. That's why you need that 80-20 focus because there's so much going on even outside the SAP context and the industry that affects that. Um, one thing, uh, so I talked about this in the white paper. If you check it out, you can see some detail around how I recommend going about this. But one thing I did say in the white paper that I think is important 
is that while 80-20 I think is ideal, I'd probably rather see a 70-30 one way or the other than a 90-10. And so I think that is reflective of a slow change that we are seeing where there really is a gradual techno-functional convergence and it is going to happen. And those consultants who really understand that are going to do better. Uh, you know, basically it's, it's, it's a time in the SAP market where consulting is really about solving business problems. And that really tends to bring technology to bear on real business issues. And that's why these lines are getting blurred. And don't think because you're not a consultant that this doesn't affect you. It absolutely does. It's just all of us, in a sense, need to be cultivating a consultant persona. Even when we're working full-time on a project, we need to sort of be that go-to person that people turn to. That's how you develop a certain level of indispensability on your project that will really pay off in a time of a lot of outsourcing and tight budgets on projects. So anyway, that's my view of the, the techno-functional split as I see it now. And uh, in terms of the white paper, I'd really like to thank Claudine Lagerholm of SAP for giving me the opportunity to write that. I hope you check it out. It's probably the most important thing I've written on SAP in about 10 years in terms of career stuff. Anyway, this is John Reed of johnerp.com signing off.